Hi everybody, it's Dan Boole coming at you from my office at our new shop uh, south of downtown Los Angeles. Uh, still no artwork on the wall and still no proper lighting and I still don't have my mixing board hooked up. So again, I'm sorry, it's a chat show this week. But I did uh, bring in the weirdest looking 65 I could find for decoration on the show. And uh, I hope it's amusing to you. Uh, it's Western Tooled Tolex with baby blue insert, and uh, it's very fun. Uh, so today we're just going to um, we're just going to talk about amps. I'm going to kind of get you guys updated on what's going on in 65. I can answer geeky, techy questions if you like. Uh, we can just have fun talking about whatever. It's a loose show today. Um, Hopefully, you know, realistically, it might be a couple weeks before I have sound again on the show uh, with NAM coming up. I just, everything's still in boxes here because all we're doing is getting our shop going. So I apologize for that. And I'm very grateful that you guys, <coughs> excuse me, uh, showed up. We have a nice crowd here. So uh, this is good. I'm looking at the control panel and uh, we got a good crowd here. Let me try to rearrange this camera a little better so it's a little easier to look at. That makes it a little bit, little better. So I have to read, for those of you that haven't been on the show before, there's a large chat window going. So most of you watch this on the recording and you don't get to see the chat. But there's a large chat window going here that I'm trying to read, look into the camera, and, um, you know, be coherent. Uh, so, yeah, so Martin Gusland, hi, glad you made it from Norway. We've got a lot of countries represented again today. Uh, I know of uh, Germany, uh, Britain, United Kingdom, England, and Norway, of course, the United States. So if I'm missing anybody, oh, Andre Mack, you're in Argentina, aren't you? So we're doing pretty good. It's three different continents already. I like that. And uh, I can see there's 28 of you that have logged in and registered. Um, and I look on the dashboard, there's usually a few hundred more people watching at the same time that just lurk. You know, they hit the link from another page. What days and time you and Peter plan on being at NAM? Uh, says RJ Sanders. Uh, well, I'm going to be there all four days. Peter's going to be there Thursday and Friday because he has uh, an engagement with Cheryl Crow on Saturday. Uh, so he's got to take the red eye fly, flight out um, Friday night. And uh, so we won't have him for the weekend, unfortunately. But, you know, Cheryl pays the bills. You know, he's. He's technically Cheryl's employee, so he doesn't have a choice on these things. But, um, so anyway, uh, what's going on at 65? Well, we have just been working our skinny little butts off here to get the new shop going. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was talking with the guys before we started recording and um, telling them that, you know, really what we're doing right now we're kind of starting a new business you know we have the same crew and we're making the same products but the shops totally different and I have to teach uh, boutique amps distributions organization you know they're learning about how we get our parts um, all these sorts of things two guys wrote oops lost you Dan are you still there am I alive Check one, two. All okay now. Okay, good. Um, so we're kind of starting over, and it's just like any move, um, it's taken five times as much work as we guessed. You know what it's like when you move. You always go, oh, just put everything in boxes. We'll move it. We'll unpack the boxes. Everything will be fine. Not the case at all. It's been uh, fun but very tiring and very stressful, as you can tell by the bags under my eyes and the tone of my voice. Um, I'm pooped. I am seriously pooped. 
but we're getting through it and they're making amps in there and they're going out the door and we're getting up to speed we're not quite all the way up to speed but we're getting there um, so that's the good news um, and it's all looking very positive down the road we've got to do a lot of you know it's just weird integrating into a new company and they're being great and giving us all the resources we need and um, but it just there's a learning curve you know it's a little bit of a learning curve and it that learning curve is scary for us and scary for them so we're all in it together that's very good but uh, anyway so uh, you know we're, we're getting the preliminary stuff together I will have finalized pricing for you for next year um, hopefully by the end of this week definitely by next week's show um, what you're going to see, you know, we had the big price increase in the fall. Um, so all the prices are going down significantly from those. Uh, almost all of them, I think, are going to be a little bit less than they actually were uh, before the price increase. They're going to go down to pricing that was three years ago, four years ago. Um, just because we have so many resources here, it, it saves us money. And we're making the amps exactly the same, just on a larger scale. So the buying power is better. Um, some of the stuff we're making in-house now uh, that we were buying. Um, good point. RJ Sanders says we need to update our website. Yes, we do. And I'm, I'm working with a new web guy to get that done. So, um, um, so I think you're going to be really happy with the pricing and the availability. Yeah, Ventura is going back down to where it was before. I think it's actually a little bit better. Um, so the prices that are on our website, completely irrelevant. Um, I need to get in there. Actually, you know what? I can go and just write that the pr new pricing is coming um, this afternoon. We just don't know the exact number yet. I haven't got the word. Uh, we're really close and we're just letting it digest for a few days. Uh, Mickey Kid says, how many guys do you have making amps now? Uh, well, it, right now it's the, the crew that we had over in North Hollywood plus one more right now. There's ultimately going to be more. Uh, but right now we don't have all the parts in. We're still waiting on some stuff to arrive. And so I got two builders working, two techs working right now. Um, and we have a production manager who's part of Boutique Amps Distribution. Todd Vushins, you guys might end up seeing him on the show once in a while. Uh, hey, Stratocaster Mojo, how are you, man? Yeah? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <sighs> I couldn't be more tired. <clears throat> and the only reason I'm here doing the show is, uh, because I like talking to you guys. Uh, the sound is going good. I saw the top of it this morning. And it went to paint. Um, so the top of it's now black. And they were cutting the big outer vents yesterday out of these huge sheets of aluminum uh, on our CNC machine, uh, which is cool to watch. That CNC machine is amazing. You can just cut anything out of it. They're actually cutting like these giant 65 logos that are about this big that we're going to give to our dealers and sell them if anybody wants them. They look really cool, three-dimensional. I mean, it's just like this logo, only it's like, I don't know, two feet, three feet across. It's really nice. Um, it's very fun. Let me get a little more on camera here. All right, focus. Ah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Get where I can get comfortable in this chair. The lighting's so bad with regular lighting, I apologize. Um, let's see, how's the sound booth going? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're just rolling right along. Nam's going to be amazing. Um, it's just a whole lot of work. It, for those of you that have never been behind the scenes at Nam, um, it's really. Hey, what's up, VA Casey? Is that Virginia Casey? Um, it's an astonishing amount of work, and you get an amazing lack of sleep. Um, 
And, you know, these guys at Boutique Amps Distribution are just throwing the world at us. So they've got to do, you know, Boutique Amps Distribution handles um, the Agnator pedal, Agnator amps and the Bogner pedals and a few other things. But, you know, we're all, you know, like the sales guy, Rich Ross, who was our sales guy, he's now the sales guy for, for those brands as well. And, um, um, they're doing three Nambus, and uh, it's just crazy. Are there any new models being released at NAM this year? Michael Varner 5 asked. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, the Producer 6L is really our new amp. I kind of pre-released it in the fall. But the Producer 6L, hey, greetings from Norway. Hello. Tusen Tak for coming by. Lots of Norwegians. Egand. If I'm saying that correctly. Uh, rock and Roll Willie. Hey, finally made it. I'm glad you're here. We're developing a good crowd today. Sorry, guys, for you that are just logging in. Um, it's another just chat show Wednesday because we've been working so hard. I, I don't have my rig set up at all. I intended to at least have one good vocal mic set up today, and I was on the phone until four minutes before the show, and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's impossible. So uh, we might, Michael, we're talking about releasing some new amps in the red line, but it's not finalized yet, so I'm just going to hold off on saying that. I'll definitely, uh, next week, we'll have an answer for you on that. Um, so it should be good. What amps would you guys like to see in the red line? You know, if I could make a more affordable version of what we do, what would be your choice? Ah, uh, Joachim, friend of Arna K and Stig with, with the 65 producer. I want one, and it's going to be a high gain. Yeah, okay. The producer gets a lot of dirt, man. Ken Christian says, getting my first 65. Love the show. Oh, cool. Welcome, Ken. Nice to see you. Uh, <clears throat> Rob Balla says, a Soho. That's kind of what we're thinking, too. Um... Barchetta, about how about microamps? Ah, eh, not, not yet. Uh, Empire. Yeah. Pink Pacer says, did you say boutique amps distribution are also doing egg amps? Yeah, they import them. They don't make them. Uh, they just have. Uh, we have the same sales guy. Yeah, that's about it. Redline Empire, please. Empire Soho would be cool. Okay. Pink Paisley says, they're not boutique amps, are they? Well, I'll let you talk that over with the guys that own the company. All I ever see of Eggnator here is boxes going out. So I don't know how that works, and I, I haven't even asked because um, it's just completely separate from what we're doing. Uh, Egan says... Yeah, I may need an extra pedal for the good old trashy sound. I'm seriously thinking of one after hearing it live. Well, I'm sorry, Joachim, I'm, uh, you talk, which pedal are you talking about? Or are you talking about one of our amps? Did you go see someone play in Norway, like the Hellbillies or somebody? Oh, the producer. Producer gets really dirty, man. Unless you want to go, it doesn't really do metal. Um, but just for straight ahead gain, it's dirty. It does really well. It does really well. Oh, I apologize. Guys, we've been working our butts off. And I am so tired and so worn out. It's crazy. And so is everybody in the shop. We're all trying hard. We're doing really, really, really good. It's just exhausting. So I'll have all that. Um, your Woodsmith builder has some talent. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dirty59 says, I still need to get a few cabs. What are the prices are the cabs going to be doing this year? Uh, they're going to be kind of the same. I think the 112 is going down. Um... 
they're going to go down a little bit. I mean, you know, so there's not much room in the cabinets. Um, Peter Donker says, hey, Dan, looking good. Not. Thank you, Peter. It's always a pleasure. Yes, I'm very tired, and it shows, doesn't it? Uh, King Darko says, hey, Dan. Hey, King Darko, what's up, dude? Uh, we are going to be building the cabinets here in the shop. Uh, it's not a huge savings, believe it or not. Because um, we are we bought a $250,000 CNC machine. So there are there is some expense there. Uh, what that's really going to allow us to do is build them right away. Uh, well, my biggest production slowdowns... Uh, my biggest production slowdowns have always been cabinets. Sometimes cabinets take three weeks. We're sitting around with our finger in our nose trying to figure out what to do. Um, no, this amp is blue, King Darko. Baby blue here, and this is like western black tooled Tolex. Um, and we're not building the cabinets here yet. We're just working on that. So probably for a couple of months we're going to still be buying cabinets from vendors. Um, Stratocaster Mojo says, are you going to CNC your vents then? Not on this machine, where we have them made, they're CNC'd. Uh, Les Fenderson 888 says, any shop picks? That wire cutter stripper sounds cool. Yeah, we got that all set up yesterday. That was really cool. And literally, the amount of wire that that thing can strip is astonishing. Literally, what would take our builders an hour to pre-cut and strip, that machine did in like three minutes. I mean, it just goes, kick -kush, kick -kush, kick -kush, kick -kush, kick -kush, and it, the wire comes out pre-cut with uh, a lead stripped on it already. So, um, so what that means is our, you know, our builder can go, okay, for this amp I need 15 red, things that are four inches and ten black ones that are three inches and then, then we just program it in and it just cuts it all out. Um, uh, yeah, the tooling is cool. Rock and Roll Willie likes the head. Uh, Dirty 59 asks, how long till you are 100% and actually get into some R&D on the new red line? Well, we're doing some R&D on the new red line. I mean, right now, they're just exactly the same. They're just hand-wired stuff, only with uh, machine-wound transformers uh, instead of the hand-wound. That's the big price difference. So, uh, hand-wound transformers cost a fortune. Uh, I posted a video, Stratocaster Mojo, on our, my Facebook pages um, with a look at our NAM booth. I haven't really done a video of the shop yet, which I need to do. Uh, Rock and Roll Willie says, I heard hand strip wire sounds better. Oh, it could be. I don't know about that. Uh, no, it's just the ability to make them faster is the key, because, you know, the big problem at the old shop um, is uh, we couldn't make things fast enough. You know, I always had a wall full of orders that were back ordered. And it's really frustrating for our dealers, really frustrating for me, really frustrating for customers. And, um, you know, that's the ceiling you hit with boutique amps. Um, no, I know Rock and Roll Willie, that's fine. I know you're joking. Uh, but that's the ceiling you hit in production is how fast can you actually do it? So, you know, you, there's two ways to rush it, one of which is just rush it and have a lot of sloppy amps with mistakes in them. Or the other is to get machinery to help you. So uh, the machinery that they have here is going to make a big difference. Big, big difference. Uh, just pre-cutting all those wires. You know, we'll have bins full of pre-cut color-coded wire already. It's going to take hour, hour and a half out of the build time. You know, so an amp that takes our builder, you know, six to seven hours to make gets it down to five. So uh, that means we can make more amps per week. So we can free these guys up. You know, they can make an extra four amps a week or something. And that means we ship more product, which means more people have 65s, which means we're all happy. Right? 
that means he gets a lunch break now. I always eat lunch later anyway. I always end up eating lunch at 2 or something. Yesterday I ate lunch at 4 o'clock. It's crazy. But yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have to cut this show kind of short because i got to drive back up to the valley and meet an artist. Stratocaster Mojo says, Pretty excited for all the things ahead with 65 in this movie, you guys. Thank you. We're excited, too. <clears throat> you never know it from the look on my face. But um, it's, uh, it's really cool, and the potential is amazing. Uh, it's going to allow us to just do a bunch of things with our brand. Um, you know, it's different. Peter Donker says, I always wondered what makes hand-wired sound better. I can hear the difference in, with my pickups, but how about trafos? I'm not sure what trafos means. Um, <clears throat> well, there's a few elements to hand wire. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to be so bold as to say they sound better. I like them better. Um, but at the same time, I've heard some printed circuit board amps that sound fantastic. Um, I think if you do a printed circuit board correctly, don't do it on the cheap, <clears throat> you can come up with really good sound stuff. The Oh, transformers. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, you can still use good transformers on PCBs. It's just you got to pay for it. You know, uh, it's there's sort of a floor you hit. You, it's hard to make a really good amp under a certain price unless you just send it over to China. And even then, you know, the Chinese transformers aren't as good. And a lot of the Chinese board components just sound different <clears throat> than what we're all used to in the Western world. Um, so, yeah, it, it, but the biggest difference is, you know, we're using big thick wire uh, for the signal and not all the parts are on the same exact plane. You know, when you do a printed circuit board, everything's on the exact same plane. And that can cause interaction that's different <clears throat> with a hand-wired amp. You can go through the amp and move the wires around, adjust the parts, and you get it where it's perfect. So. The, the onus when you're doing a printed circuit board is to get it right the first time because if you, you don't have it right, they're all made exactly the same. By the same token, if you get it right <clears throat> the first time, then they're all exactly right. So, um, you know, we're going to be doing some PCB stuff down the road. We're probably going to do a third series of amps down the road, but <clears throat> that's just in the future. And we will do it as you would expect, 65 to do it. Um, kind of over the top good uh, and safe and reliable and blah 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 um, Blaine B says are 65's considered point to point yeah I think so I mean there's a, that's a, there's kind of loose definitions for point to point um, technically point to point means all the parts are connected to each other there's no wire in between them. and no amps um, uh, no amps are built like that. You know, the last ones that were made like that, I think Gibson's in the 50s. But um, if you have any kind of board whatsoever, like we're kind of converting everything over to an eyelet board. Um, you know, there are new laws this year about safety, so we're going to have to convert everything to an eyelet board um, so that we're legal. And uh, but all of our parts, the board's just a placeholder. You know, the, the parts are connected to a wire, which is connected to a tube or a pod or whatever. Um, so I consider that to be point to point. I don't know if there's actually a correct definition of it. Uh, <coughs> I had always understood point to point to mean uh, there's no wires or very few wires. And you look at like old Gibsons especially, for every tube, you know, on the cathode, the cathode resistor and the bypass cap are right on the pin of that socket. And, you know, they're, they're connected to that tube. You know, the plate resistor is on the, that pin of that socket, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, the only thing that's connected by wires, um, you know, are pots and the electrolytic caps and stuff, but everything else is actually connected to each other. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a long answer, Blaine. Um, so there's a lot of argument about what point-to-point -point means. 
I, I take it as a loose definition that you're not using a printed circuit board. I think if you're building your amp on turret boards or on eyelet boards or on tag strips, we do a lot of tag strip boards. That's point to point. It's the same thing. But yeah, I, the idea with point to point is you minimize, you know, wire runs, and <clears throat> which does make a little bit of difference. And someone, hey, Frank, how are you? FS75. Uh, yes, we will have 65 cables. We're working on that. Um, there was a question here. Someone, uh, Barchetta Valve Amp, says it comes down to good soldering connections and wire directions. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I hate to admit this out loud because it sort of takes a little bit of the mystery. <clears throat> um, uh, thank you, Doug. I, I got it right. I used to have a copy of the military grade definition of point to point. Doug Gilliam says, "You hit it on the nose, Dan." Yeah. Well, it's. <clears throat> I think just anything that's not on a PCB is, if it's done well, it's point to point. But um, Barchetta valve amp it talked about good soldering connections in wire direction. That is a huge part of it because, you know, a circuit is a circuit. Even though our circuits are sort of unusual, I didn't invent anything. I'm just using a different recipe than most people do. Uh, you know, every tube has a cathode resistor and a plate resistor and power tubes, you know, grid resistor, and you have a pot that attenuates the signal into the control grid on the first tube, and you know, they all do the similar thing. So there's just a lot of flavors. It's like saying I'm making chicken and noodles. Well, you can make 30 different kinds of chicken and noodles, but it's still just chicken and noodles, you know. At its core, it's just chicken and noodles. So tube amps at their core are all kind of the same thing. You know, the relationship between the cathode and the plate is what determines the gain on that particular tube. Uh, the coupling caps that you use to couple all those parts together determine how much frequency is allowed through each component. You can emphasize certain frequencies or take away certain frequencies based on the size of components that you use. <clears throat> that's all common through all tube amps. Uh, that's, you know, and, you know, there's the same kind of five amps that everyone starts with. You know, you, you do a Fender Deluxe, you do a Plexi, you do an AC30, uh, you know, do a Twin Reverb, you know, 100 Watt Marshall. You, know, you get through those and you know they're all frighteningly similar that's why you can sort of copy that circuit exactly and it sounds close to the old amp I mean it never sounds the same because the parts are just physically different you know the, the capacitors that we get now are different than people bought 50 years ago um, they're made in a different way they're they use probably different materials in some sense um, even though it's a 0.01 microfarad cap um, you know, the construction methods are different, and that all affects the sound. It all does. So there's no way to absolutely duplicate an old amp. Plus, you don't have 40 years of bacteria and softening and degradation and all that stuff. But, you know, just the, the parts that those amps are made out of don't exist anymore. Uh, a 50-year-old cap might degrade in a good way, too, says Barchetta Valve. That's right. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's just random. You know, like if you have a tweed fender with original coupling caps in it, I guarantee you they're all leaking DC. And their 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 job is to block DC, you know. Um, that's why you have to have a coupling cap on there so DC doesn't pass down all their components. And if you have a 50s twin or 50s tweed deluxe or whatever, I guarantee you those caps are leaking DC all over the place, but you might like the way it sounds. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to hum. <laughs> and, but you might like the way it sounds. And you can't recreate that. I mean, I can't go out and buy coupling caps that are leaking DC. I'm 47, and I remember playing a lot of what are now considered the classic amps when they weren't that old. And they sounded very different than they sound now. You know, like I own a 71 Marshall. Uh, I just got a 70 also, but it's on its way. I got a Fallen 70. Um, but I own a 71 Marshall that sounds way different than when I bought it. 
I mean, I bought it 30 years ago. Um, yeah, it's 2013. I bought it 30 years ago. Um, and it sounds really, really different than when I bought it. It's very warm and, and a lot fatter sounding now. When I bought it, it was really sharp. And, and that's just time. Transformers change over time. Capacitors, resistors change. Everything. Hey, Master Sonics! What's going on in Puerto Rico? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, get the guys who are logging in just catch back up, caught up. <clears throat> I don't have my rig. We need to talk. Well, I'll be in my car after I finish the show so we can chat. Uh, hey, Carp. How are you, buddy? I haven't even looked at who's online here. Let's do our daily shout out to everybody who's on the show. Andre Mack, Barchetta Valvan, Blaine B, Carp Amps, Dirty 59, Doug Gillian, FS75, Fuzz Stone, Ken Christian, King Darko, Knut Berga, Les Fenderson 888, Martin Gooslin, Master Sonics, Mickey Dean, Norwegian Slow Mo. Peter Donkers, Ray Taylor, Rob Ballas, Rock and Roll Willie, Stratocaster Mojo, Tone Buzz, and Virginia Casey. You're the guys that actually allowed Ustream to show your name. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. I'm very glad you're here. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I don't have my rig set up, Carp and Master Sonics. Um, Clinch is so freaking busy. Hey, you recognize this amp cart? It was Skillman's. If I can get it on, it's hard to get it on camera without falling off the, falling off the desk. Oh yeah, he says. Yeah, this was Skillman's amp. So I'm going to do just a short show today. We're going to cut it off. Uh, it's Royal Albert. That's right, Master Sonics. Uh, I'm going to cut it off right at one o'clock because I got to go up and meet an artist in the valley uh, as soon as we're done. Pink Paisley 69 says when you will be doing PCB amps I hope you're not considering going abroad. No, huh? we don't need to do that. Um, uh, yeah, it does look like the the back of a powder blue Mustang. Exactly, you got it. These vents are Mustang taillights. That's what I patterned them off of. I had a 67 Mustang. Thank you, Carp. Says that amp's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, no, here in LA, we can do PCBs nice, affordable, and fast. You know, like Bogner does theirs here, and Paul Rivera, and people like that. Peter Donker says, I built a 5E3 Tweed. The thin solid pine cab made a big difference. Uh, bigger cabs are better of white ply. I think, oh, okay. Yeah, I know guys are starting to get back into pine cabinets these days. You know, the Tweeds were pines, I think, but I think that was it. They definitely have a different sound. Pink Paisley 69, just hoping you will never, ever go to China. Don't lose any sleep, man. It's all good. We can do them all right here. So, uh, I've seen great stuff come out of China, just not really on most guitar apps. That's what's frustrating. Um, you know, Apple computers are made in China. And uh, my giant Samsung television, even though it's a Korean company, is, you know, so it shouldn't be hard to do. Uh, Celestian, what about Celestian? Yeah, Celestian's made in China, that's right. And, you know, I, I, I started this business right before they did the changeover from England to China. And I gotta be honest with you, the speakers got more consistent and reliable when they went to China. They sound exactly the same, I can't tell the difference. Because according to Celestian, it's the same exact parts and everything, it's just uh, Chinese hands. Uh, will the new prices be out by this weekend? I don't know, Tone Buzz. Um, it's kind of up to my sales guy and the guy that runs Boutique Amps Distribution. Uh, I hope so. Rock and Roll Willie says, if they would just treat their employees better in China. 
Yeah, you know, I think the Chinese thing is, I think there's some really bad situations there. I know of other factories that are not, but um, I know, you know, like Celestian stuff is made in a particular factory that has a fantastic reputation. Very modern, very forward thinking. Uh, there are certain areas of China where the factories are real sweatshops. And I know that's horrible. Um, but I'm not really interested in that. I don't really want to do that. Pink Paisley said, maybe it's because English workers tend to drink too much. Uh, could be. You know, I lived in England, and I knew a lot of people who went out to lunch and just drank beer and ate chips. <clears throat> and then they would come back and have a sandwich at 2 o'clock to sober up and have tea and a sandwich at 2 uh, to sober up and and get everything done. Look, depth. Um, Barchetta Valvamp says, have you tried Eminence? I, not lately. I tried Eminence years ago, and I wasn't real pleased with him. Uh, you know what I'm really interested in is that new Eric Johnson speaker, though. Uh, I know Eminence is kind of releasing a lot of new products, so I'm very open to try it. Um, Pink Paisley 69 says, when will you be starting to do pedals and which ones? Well, we're going to try to do it soon. I, I hope we have them out by the summer, uh, but I can't guarantee anything. Uh, but we're going to do, you know, um, Clean Boost and our flavor of dirt, you know, uh, the 65 thing. So uh, I have a couple of prototypes that sound fantastic. Like one of them, the distortion is so natural, like I played it through a Tupelo and on the clean side. So I, you know, I vacillate between being on the Tupelo clean side and then hitting the bump on the Tupelo and then going back to the clean side on the Tupelo instead of hitting the bump trying this new pedal. And man, it sounded exactly the same. It was really cool, but what you could do is push it a lot harder than you can do the bump. So it was really cool. It sounded so good, I almost thought about integrating it into the amp. It was it's very, very natural. What kind of dirt pedals? Uh, you know, most likely germanium, uh, probably just some regular distortion overdrive kind of things. And then I like FET driven clean boosts. I just like to sweeten them up a little bit. Most, <clears throat> most FET driven clean boosts that I, I own, um, I have to go in there and change some components to sweeten it up because it sounds a little digi and hi-fi to me. Um, Carp Amp says, what cable manufacturers do you like? For instrument cables? I got two, really, that I like. Um, Colossal and Solid. They're pretty similar cables. They're both great. You know, Colossals, I think, are the most rugged cable out there. And I know Brian Mendes very well and he makes a great product. Um, solid cables are made by <clears throat> uh, Niall McGaughy and um, Dirty 59, the second one, uh, solid cables I guess, the two that I was talking, I don't know which one I said first. Uh, so there's Colossal Cables, which I think is ColossalCable.com and Solid Cables, I think is also SolidCables.com um, I know both those guys really well, and they make really good stuff. Both of them are a great way to spend your money. Uh, to me, their cables are extremely transparent, and they're extremely tough, <clears throat> which is important to me. Uh, Guitar Dom says, I love my 65 color boost. Thank you. Appreciate that. I would love to buy more pedals from you. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll make that happen for you. Yeah, I just kind of want to get some different flavors of dirt. You know, because not most of our amps aren't real high gain, so it's nice to have a little extra push on top. And we just want it to sound natural and be usable with our stuff. Should be very, oh, excuse me, very cool. Very, very cool. So anyway, um, we're got, we got about 15 minutes left here. What do you guys want to talk about? What's on your mind? It's a nice big crowd. It keeps growing. Which version of the Colossal? Oh, uh, just the regular one. Some ones I get. The, not the Brooklyn one, but the other one. Just the regular instrument cables. 
They're fantastic. My colossals have never broken. We break amp and we break guitar chords here all the time. <clears throat> Pink Paisley 69, good question. Till I can buy something to push my amp a little harder from 65 amps, could you recommend something to me, please? Um, uh, well, you know, it's personal taste. It kind of depends on what you want. Um, <clears throat> I use a couple things. I have a push pedal from Rob Keeler, K-E-E-L-E-R. I like that quite a bit. Sex Drive, someone mentioned here. It's a very nice pedal. Um, personally, if you just want to push the front end harder without adding distortion into it, <clears throat> I love the Strymon OB-1 compressor because it has a clean boost and a compressor built out of it. Um, oh, I can help you with the Keith tone. Um, but, um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of tough. You know, I have an old rat pedal. I love it. But I really like just using boosters. All right, let the amp do what it already does. You know, just push the existing circuit harder. Um, to me, sounds the most usable. But it depends on how much dirt you want. I mean, Pink Paisley, how dirty are you talking about getting? Can you give me some example? You want to get as dirty as... ACDC, or do you want to get as dirty as Metallica, or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, someone mentioned the Timmy pedal. That's a really good pedal, too. Is it Paul Corcoran that makes that? That's really nice. Pink Paisley, yeah, but the Obi-Wan you can't use. Yeah, you can. You can use the boost by itself. It turns on by itself. <clears throat> you don't have to have the compressor on to use the booster. King Darko says, hey, Dan, ever think about doing a range of pedal? What do you mean by that? What, uh, a variety? Yeah, I've got a lot of ideas for pedals. I just don't have any time you know, right now. Ken Christian, about my first 65, could I coax a Keith tone out of a Royal Albert? Need a tweed tone with nuts. You can. Uh, that's not the best choice. It's a good choice. It'll work. Um, but it's uh, the one that's going to lend itself to Keith the most is probably Tupelo and the Producer 6L. Yeah, I hear you, Paisley. That's sort of the natural assumption that you have to turn one side on before the other one works, but it works great. It works fine. You know, even if it didn't, you can just turn the compression down. And it works really cool. Yeah, the Tupelo will get that tone. You know, a lot of sounding like Keith is playing like Keith. Um, he's got such a unique way that he plays. Um, it should be good. Where are you, Ken? Maybe I can help you. Make this easier for you. Les Fenderson 88 says, Will the new move mean more colors? A tweed Ventura would be so sweet. Uh, you know, I've never had a request for a tweed. Uh, sure, why not? If I have a tweed in stock. So my email is making noise here. Um... Ah, uh, Frank, yeah, well, I won't be using this mic. Uh, I'm just using the mic on my webcam right now. I know it sounds like butt. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all I got right now. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh, the, sound, the acoustics will be better. There's nothing on the walls, as you can hear, and nothing's up. And once I put artwork on the wall, that really helps. But yeah, I have sound dampeners that I need to use. But I'll have a real microphone also. <clears throat> so it'll be much different sound than this. I, you're right. It sucks. Uh, Rock and Roll Willie says, to me there are a lot of different Keith tones. There really is. Um, uh, you know, Keith went through a lot of different phases. You know, Tumble and Die seems to be the one song everyone agrees sounds like Keith, you know. 
<clears throat> that sort of open genie telly thing. Uh, I'm in the unauthorized Rolling Stones in San Francisco. Oh, right on. So you're here in California. Oh, is Rick there with you? I just got a text. That's hilarious. From Rick. Hey, Rick. Uh, want to trade my old Albert behind you for number nine? Is this the one you want to get back? Rick, is that the deal? Yeah, he just texted me too. But isn't this the one that you sold to your buddy? Yeah, Ken, you can come down. It's fine. There's, we're going to have more stores in San Francisco soon. So I think San Francisco is going to have to end up being a guitar center town because none of the music stores there carry high-end stuff anymore. Rick, are you watching the show right now? Or are you just texting me? Yes, watching. That was the tone chaser. No, sold that to a guy back east. I'll leave you alone and talk. Oh, we'll talk anytime, Rick. I miss seeing you. You got to come down and see the new place. They did a good job building us a shop here. It looks really nice. Obviously, I haven't finished my office yet. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, Skillman's just lurking on the show. I can see on my dashboard behind this that there's a lot of people that um, watch the show without logging in. Whether they can't log in or they don't want to, I don't know what it is, but everybody that shows up here, like the guests are people that I think logged in, and then the viewers are the ones that actually registered on the chat window. Ah, the Beatle bass drum head, yeah, I have that. Uh, RJ Sanders says, need him in the South Bay. Gelb is great. I love Gelb. That's a nice store and nice people. Um, but is limited in space. Guitar Showcase in San Jose might be a good place. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, San Francisco's weird. You know, we have, uh, what, Redwood City? Is that, That's where Gelb is, right? You know, it's kind of down on the peninsula and it's hard for people to get to. And I love those guys there. They're really cool. And um, it's just, you know, it's not a high traffic place for us. So uh, we need to figure out something else. I think in the city, we're probably going to have to do the Platinum Room, the Guitar Center Platinum Room in the city. The place is jammed all the time. And they get requests for our gear all the time. So, um, so anyway... Um, we're working on it. But what's that called? Guitar Showcase in San Jose. I'm going to text that to my sales guy right now before I forget it. Because that's definitely a place we need representation. So yeah, guys, I only got about five minutes here. Um, what should we do? What's it called again? Guitar Showcase. In San Jose. Uh, oh, thank you, guys. Uh, oh, here was the question. You asked this before, Dirty 59. I'm sorry. 
He says, what type of wiring do you use in your Les Pauls? I use the 57 wiring. 57 wiring to me is the most flexible. Also, the pickups interact the most. So if you're in the middle position, you get a bigger swing of tones. Um, but it also lets the treble bleed through when you roll the when you roll the pots back. You get so you don't get you don't get this when you roll the pots back. Uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, Carp, Rob Ballas, Ken Christian, Dirty Fifty Nine, all you guys. Thank you for showing up. It's amazing how fast an hour goes by on this show, isn't it? Uh, will you be using an ISO cab, or do you have a dedicated room? Oh, for my show? Uh, yeah, I'll be on next week, Carp. Um, keep on keeping on. Thank you, sir. Got to go put some rest. Make some noise. Get some rest. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I'm going to have a live room, I hope, for the show. I'm not wild about ISO cabs. It makes everything sound kind of sterile. But I still haven't even ran the wiring or anything, so I, it's all up in the air right now. Worst case scenario, I might just park one here outside my door. It's pointing the other way. And the people out in the shop will just have to listen to it while I'm doing my show. It is what it is. We'll make it work one way or another. Cool. Well, here we go. It's 12.58. Going to kind of throw up last call here because I got to get in my car and run. I do appreciate you guys sincerely, and thanks for bearing with me with this slapdash show. I will work on it, I swear, because um, it's sort of embarrassing. But uh, you know, you guys are fun. Thank you, Norwegian Slow Mo. I appreciate it. Uh, mellow show. Sorry, it wasn't quite as good. Can you show us that amp really quick? Yeah, sure. Let me pull this camera off. And I can get close to it. Isn't that funny? The blue kind of weirds out the camera. That's baby blue. So here's the rest of my office. I got one light on, and it's an LED light. It looks like poop. There's the rest of my lights waiting to be set up. Boxes on my sofa. There's my bookshelf, still wrapped. There's my mixing board, not plugged into anything. So you get the idea. Hey, Jason. Well, I do record the show, Jason, so you'll be able to see it here shortly. Actually, you can look at it on Ustream right now. Going grocery shopping. Thanks, Dan. Have a good week. Those Adams are good. Yeah, I like those. Did the Empire Proto sell? Yeah, yeah, they're all gone. Empires are all sold. All that. I don't have any more amps to sell. Uh, that was financing our move. Anyway, thank you guys, King Darko, Tone Buzz. I appreciate all the good comments. You guys ask smart questions. I really like that. I thank you for it. Uh, not like, hey man, remember that one time when you do do do. Uh, smart bunch of guys. I appreciate it sincerely. Uh, so I'm always available. Our phone numbers haven't changed. I've ported all the phones down here. Uh, still Dan at 65amps.com. I'm on Facebook quite a bit. I'm on Twitter as 65Dan if you want to follow me. I don't really do much on Twitter, but you can follow it. Occasionally I do. Um, yeah, man. Life is good. Life is very good. And hopefully I'll have a little more complete uh, stuff to talk about with you guys next week. I can tell you pricing, all the new models or the new lineups. We're deleting a couple of amps that just don't sell. We'll still make them as a special order, but it'll take months if you want something so uh, we're just kind of sticking with the good sellers so that we can be efficient uh, like I say we'll still make stuff on special order but you know uh, it won't be one of our regular things so anyway I hope you guys are all great and I thank you again it's 101 and I got a split and actually get on the 101 ironically the 101 freeway so anyway it's January 9th. I will see you next week, and thank you again so very much for coming. All right? Take care.